with the Champions League games in the summer. We did not want more games in the summer. Uh, and we wanted to play a Mexican team because we wanted to prep for uh, the Champions League run. So that stuff is all competition related. The logistics of it, of this particular game, this particular tournament, are also complicated in the sense that uh, that week uh, we obviously have a league match a day after this game, and there's a One Direction concert, I think, two days before. Uh, Chris Cornish is auditioning. Uh, if any of you guys want to talk to him after this, uh, they, they got to replace that guy, right? Didn't they lose one lately? Yeah. So I said, read my last week. <laughs> All right. Uh, sorry, did I answer your question? <laughs> uh, yeah, so, yeah. But uh, so, were you guys? Do you know if you guys were approached um, to be in that the International Challenge Cup, or were you guys just not we're, interested at all? We're, we're, you know, we're in these conversations. These, then those folks talk to everybody. Re relevant sports talk to everybody. <clears throat> um, but the strategic choice was if we're going to focus on Champions League, if we're going to have Open Cup, where obviously the Sounders have made deep runs the last couple of years, we weren't willing to take on more games. We wanted to focus on Champions League. We want to try to win that tournament. And if you look at some of the extraordinary things that Montreal's done, obviously now they're in the Champions League final tonight. Pretty exciting for the league to have somebody there. You know, but you, I'm telling you, it makes a difference. It matters if you are willing to go above and beyond to prepare for those Champions League games and prioritize them. Uh, and you know, this is part of that. And if you if you play, in other words, if you play a Champions League game as your sixth game in 18 days, which you know potentially we are looking at if you had three games for this tournament, then. You know, that's not the ideal preparation for that tournament if you want to try to get a high seed, if you want to try to win the tournament. Yeah, Montreal tonight, um, obviously, Real Salt Lake, your team a couple years ago, came the closest uh, previous. What do you remember from that series, um, and, and what kind of sticks out to you? Oh, man, uh, you're going to make me sad. Uh, you no, know, it was just this awesome, unbelievable run, and, and, you know, we had sat down after we won the title in, in 2009 and said, you know, we're just this little club, and everybody thought we, it was a fluke that we won. Uh, how do we how do we make a difference? How do we change the league? And uh, we thought Champions League, and uh, you know we got our fans to buy in, and um, you know we were the first American team to RSL was the first American team to win their group, and uh, got a high seed, and you know then set up a favorable run through the through uh, the quarters and semis and. Uh, when uh, Morales scored the goal at Monterey in the 92nd minute uh, to tie 2-2, I know we felt pretty good. And I was, I was sitting up with some league guys and some of the officials from the Mexican Federation and probably uh, celebrated a little bit too exuberantly uh, for professional conduct. Uh, but we thought that we had gone into this, you know, the, the Monterey game had about 40,000. We thought we had kind of gone into the cauldron and pulled it out and, and uh RSL had won 37 games in a row, 37 games in a row unbeaten at home. And so, anyway, go on about stuff you guys don't care about, but uh, we thought we had a good chance, and we didn't do it, and we didn't score a goal. And unfortunately, it was a pattern that replicated itself for RSL uh, in four different finals where we couldn't get a goal, and we absolutely had to have one. And one of the reasons I'm in Seattle is we have some guys who can probably score in some, some big games. So uh, it's an advantage to be in a big market and having some more resources. I know you've had some ambivalence, I think, about uh, international friendlies necessarily with the Sounders going forward. I is this type of thing, bringing in two international teams and the Sounders sitting it out, yep. just sort of acting as host, is that something that you, you could see being common? Look, look, we would like every big international soccer team to come through our home. You know, we, we do want to be a part of it. We you know we, we're involved, you know, at least ten, tangentially with the, with the production. Um, you know, I know Club America is going to come out and train here at Starfire at some point. Um, so, uh, you know, yes. Am I, I mean, and, and look, am I categorically opposed to friendlies? No, but I prefer friendlies with a purpose, and I much rather play for trophies and play friendlies. And, um, you know, look, you, you always have to balance. I mean, that's my competitive viewpoint. Uh, you know, if there's the right business deal out there, uh, do you take that into account? Of course you do. Uh, you know, these games have gotten more and more expensive to put on. Uh, so, you know, I, I certainly am not going to pick a game that isn't a good business deal for mm -hmm. us as well, if you're talking about a friendly. Mm -hmm.